So, uh, when I uh, was here earlier, um, Andy and I were talking about publishing and whether or not uh, we invest in anything uh, at Uniscore Ventures that's related to the publishing business. And I said to him that we don't really think of um, media in, in verticals like that. Um, so if you look at the things that we invest in, they tend to be cross-media platforms, digital cross-media platforms. And one of them that we invest in is a, is a company called Boxy. Boxy makes is a piece of software that you put on your TV set. So this is my TV set. You can't really tell, um, but this is a 60-inch large display that's frankly bigger than the screen in my family room. And we're watching a video called Walk on Water. Okay? These guys are literally trying to walk on water. It's pretty funny. And uh, the point is that um, with, with the remote, with the boxy remote, I point at the screen and all of a sudden some engagement pops up. Uh, this you recognize, this is your pretty standard internet video player thing. But up here you'll see a little part that says share. And with the remote pointed at the TV, I share this. And this is now going out to thousands of people who are following me on, on Boxy. And if I want, 65,000 people who follow me on Twitter and however many people follow me on Facebook as well, uh, saying, I like Walk on Water. And what's interesting to me about that is that I'm sitting in my family room, watching TV, sitting on my couch, and without doing anything, I'm literally informing tens of thousands of people that I happen to like this. That took, takes me a nanosecond and I go back to watching TV. Never seen that before in a set-top box. We've never seen that before uh, with a TV set. Now all of a sudden we're seeing that the TV sets are connected to the internet and connected to social networks on the internet and therefore connected to lots of other people. And the kinds of things that we're used to doing on the web, we're now gonna start doing on the TV. And I think that the engagement and the intersection between the content, which is this video about people trying to walk on water, and the presentation layer that uh, wraps around it and allows us to engage with the content, we're just beginning, I think, to tap the power of, of that and what, what it will do for um, our living rooms and family rooms. So this is, um, this is a little screenshot from the uh, uh, front screen of Boxy. I actually wrote a blog post about this today. The most recent version of Boxy added something new. Um, the thing that I showed you in the prior uh, screen has been available in Boxy for at least a year. The thing that's new is that um, in addition to people sharing things they like with me in Boxy, I've now connected my Facebook and Twitter to Boxy, not to send stuff out, but Boxy's now automatically pulling my Facebook feed and my Twitter feed and looking for links to video. And anytime they see a link to a video, they pull it in and stick it in, in, my, in my Boxy. Right? So I come home after dinner, sit down in front of the TV, and instead of going to watch 24 or Lost or something like that, um, I'm watching a funny video that my son's friend Max put into his uh, Facebook feed. So uh, the, the point here is that I think the, the whole area around discovery and, and distribution of content is now starting to get impacted greatly by these social networks we've joined and the behavior of our friends in these social networks. And all of a sudden, the simple act of posting something to your Facebook feed means that people are gonna go home and watch something else at night on TV instead of what uh, they traditionally uh, watched. And, and that, I think, has big implications. Okay, so can you continue to walk around my home? This is a bad picture. Uh, sorry about that, very blurry. This is um, a remote wireless handset for a system called Sonos, which we use in, in, in our home to play music. Um, and so I wanted to uh, put some music on, I grab the, the Sonos player, and uh, instead of playing a song or going to a radio station or anything like that, I put on something called My Neighborhood 
on Last FM. And what's interesting to me about this example that I'm showing you is that it's the mashup of a bunch of different services together. So Sonos allows me to connect all the speakers in my house to the internet and go out and get an internet stream from a service called Last FM. So that's one piece of interesting thing. The other thing that's interesting is that everything we listen to in our home gets published back out through iTunes and Sonos and other services to Last FM. They record all that and they know all of our listening behavior for the past five years. Uh, you can see that by going to last.fm slash Fred Wilson. If you want to see what I listened to this morning, you can see that. If you want to see what I listened to the most ever, you can see that. It's publicly recorded and anybody can see that. But, but, but that's not the point I'm making. It then composes something called a neighborhood on the fly, which is other people who are Last FM users who have similar music tastes to what our family listens to, and composes a radio station on the fly called My Neighborhood that's unique to our family of things that we would like to listen to because uh, it's similar, because the people who listen to this uh, song happen to listen to a lot of the same things we listen to. I may nev have never heard of this artist, Rogue Wave, or this album, Permalite, but it will show up in my feed. And so the content, this song by this artist on this album, that piece of content um, has gone in a very circuitous route to end up playing on our speakers. Um, and it's because of multiple services being mashed together and combined by both humans in, by the act of listening and algorithms and internet streaming technology and devices in the home. And I think this is a pretty powerful example of the world that we're now living in. This is what I listened to this morning. Uh, this is called We Are Hunted. We Are Hunted is a web service, wearehunted.com, built by two people in Australia. What they do is they crawl the web and they, and, and they look for MP3 files that have been posted on the web largely to music blogs and they build effectively a billboard chart. And this is Flash or HTML5. I think it's Flash, but it could be HTML5. And today, these are the top nine songs that they found on the web. You click on the first one and you just listen. And this changes every day and it's a great way to discover new music. Um, and, and it's an example of another kind of discovery mechanism that's available on the web when content is uh, available in a highly liquid form. Now, now people in the media business, uh, I think, are largely um, uh, look at the music business as an example of what happens when you let your content get out on the internet in a highly liquid form. But I, I would suggest to you that um, that we're all gonna get there eventually anyway, and what, what's great about the music business is that entrepreneurs have been able to create experiences like this with music, um, and that has not happened nearly as much in some of the other forms of media that, that exist out there. <coughs>